EIR, and they said uh, because nobody gave it to them. So um, you know, that's those are the kinds of things that we could be doing too. Is we could be offering them data, and and since we bring that up, I think that would behoove them to include it in their final EIR. Okay. okay. And then if if anybody has specific things on the cultural um, uh, resource section that they feel like uh, they could comment, uh, that would be that would be great. Four point four. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, I just was having a question about the traffic flow. Uh, so, was there anything in the draft that talked about trucks going through town? Yes. That they wouldn't go through town because they asked the truck drivers not to. And can you put yeah, your cursor on <coughs> Crystal Geyser Water Drive? It's down by the railroad tracks. It's number four. Yes. It's number four is where the yeah. trucks would then turn into the plant. Yeah, that they would only go up there, but they would mm -hmm. put a sign in so that the truck drivers could see it. And we know how well that worked during Coca-Cola Dana days because mm -hmm. we had trucks up Ski Village Drive, up Everett Memorial, down Butte, looping around Shasta, trying to get into the back of the plant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so there was nothing about where they're going to turn around if they miss that? There's no turnarounds. I know. Yeah. <laughs> they'll go through town. They'll go through town. That's right. They'll go through residential neighborhoods to get turned around. Yeah. And is there pushing enforcement? Right. That's what we, we asked that. Yeah. Right. Who's going to enforce? Yeah. Well, I think, see, there is where, you know, people can then make specific things. There is no indication of what happens if they miss the turn, who, what type of enforcement will be here. Those are all specific things that you could say, this needs to be addressed. Oh, yeah. And so those those are the kind of things where, you know, you're, yes. And then speaking of traffic into the plant, speaking from truck drivers who deliver to Dannon, that when they're empty, they don't have the weight necessary during weather to get into the plant. They, they sit there and spin. They, they're, they're empty trucks. Uh, and once they're loaded, they've got weight that they're able to carry, but empty, he says it's a mess. He says they cannot make it up into that driveway. Can you get a letter from him? No, I can't, but that was a statement that maybe we should consider that a, an empty truck versus a, a loaded truck. Would you write that on ice? Ice? Yeah, on ice. On ice, yeah. trying to get into that driveway. Not just on ice, but on the that? driveway, but on the, approach, on the northbound mountain. So consider that on your Thank you. bar. Thank you going out of town. Right, up the hill there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. so Do you have questions? Under aesthetics, you mentioned the lighting, their plans for lighting up the place and everything. The city of Mount Chess is working on a lighting ordinance right now. They were. They're getting ready to. How would that affect the plants sitting on city property? No, no. plants no. on county no. property. The, the, the all county? I it is all, a little piece. Just a little corner, but the plant itself and that whole section, this whole, if you look here, this, everything I'm like the railroad the tracks above here. So the, 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 the city line is right along this road here. Yeah, it's just a tiny section. And but then the, it goes up here. But, but, so basically, this whole chunk is cut out of the thing. But it is within the city sphere of influence, and we're, the, uh, we're hoping the city will comment on that, that sort of the glare and the nighttime uh, light pollution should be an issue. And, you know, uh, people uh, who have had experience in the past with lighting issues, you know, I think should make comments to that, as well as just the glare off the building. The, you know, they make certain statements like, we will reduce glare, but there's no, like, you know, one of the things you could say is we want specific numbers, like what is the, you know, foot candles that will be shining off this building and how much light will be shining along Ski Village Drive or, you know, facing to the uh, south. Yeah. What the hell is a foot candle? <laughs> that, that's the measurement. It's a measurement. It's a measurement. You talked about um, that a lot of the noise will be from the roof area. What, what would that be exactly? Well, up on the roof there are the large... Um, air conditioning units. There are air blowers. That, if you look, if you drive by there, you can see them. There's enough. There's like 50 or 20 different circular air vents with electrical yeah, fans see. in them. Mm -hmm. There are like five or six different, you know, large air conditioning units. Mm -hmm. And then there are two large 20-foot tall cooling towers along the side of the plant that are, you know, have elevated the fans that will be blowing out there. 
Uh, that is all rooftop equipment. And, and one of the things people talk about a little bit is that not only is, are, is that equipment elevated on the top of the roof, but on the north side and the south east side and the southeast side all go up in elevation so that right. we can directly hear that and well, they don't they don't talk right about it. Yeah. You can look right across yeah. the top of the roof. And they don't they don't take into consideration elevation changes. They just say that the building from the ground level is blocked by trees and brush. And that's enough. So clear clearly it's not. You had something else? One other thing, you mentioned something about the floor wash, not allowed to go to the beach field. Right. Which permit were you addressing? Waste that, it's wastewater <laughs> treatment plant. It's work uh, WDR order 0501-233. Oh, no, <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> you can quote so That's not the wastewater. Oh, this is so <laughs> <laughs> the, per the permit for Crystal Geyser to operate their leach field yeah. Does not allow floor wash in yeah. any way, shape, or form. That's right. So, so the only way they can operate right now, if they open tomorrow, they could send it off to the city, option one, which we know they can't mm -hmm. do because it's, it's too much, mm -hmm. and option two, which is some to the city and rinse water to the leach field, but no floor wash because the, the Regional Quality Water Control Board cleaned that up for me two years ago or a year and a half ago or something. They, cleaned, they took that out. But like Geneva was saying, they're dicey in the description of the options. They actually rinse water. No, they're very clear. They say they're going to put floor wash into the leach field. They're very clear. They think they're going to get their permit changed. The DEIR says that. They say they're already, well, it's, it says that floor wash is included in that rinse water. Permitted use. And they say, they claim that that is already a permitted use. From yeah. Have we approved that yet? Yeah, but, I have. Oh, yeah. But Raven, I have it memorized. You want to know? So, also, I would like to comment about the wastewater. Um, I spoke to somebody who was familiar with juice water going through um, sewer pipes and how it degrades the sewer pipes. So, that is something that needs to be addressed. It's in there. Okay. They, they have a pH neutralization building okay. that they're going to be building and holding tanks. Okay. It's in there, and we're going to be commenting on all of that. Okay. That's, an old, that's an old picture. So that was just taken last week after the snow. Oh, cover the low snow. Mm -hmm. But I mean, here you can see this is the rooftop uh, building here. You see there's these large air conditioning units um, right here. Large air conditioning units here. Oh, yeah. And there's, these are other air conditioning units here, 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 and here. And out front, those and two big... And then these yeah. are the cooling towers, that they open, yeah. and then there's two smaller cooling towers there, as well as there's ventilation, electric ventilation fan vents all back through there and there. There and there's a lot of ventilation. Nice shiny then, chrome ones. And then these mm -hmm. are the uh, boiler stacks for the, there's four different steam boilers for generating steam for their sterilization and for their tea brewing and things like that. So these are the smoke stacks for the steam boiler. And then as well as, I'm not sure what this tank here is, uh, what this <coughs> pipe um, here is. Peggy, ha Peggy had a comment back there. Peggy? Peggy? Yeah, I'm here. Um, <laughs> One question I have uh, for you all in the legal team for you is that in the alternative analysis, which wasn't really fully fleshed out here, is that there actually is a limited alternative uh, project, which is given as an option. I think my personal opinion is, is that that is something that individuals here can look at in, in the section of the DEIR, and obviously, if you have opinions around that limited project alternative and why you would think it would be a good idea and how it would reduce impact for the project uh, from your own personal experience and well, are supported from the DEIR information, I think that's a valid um, comment that the public can, can yep. make. Um, my experience in working on CEQA and NEPA documents are is that, that your voice does count and that even though these guys have done an awesome job tonight of talking about the EIR, no matter what you say, does make a difference and it will be heard, even if it is 
packaged around your your dislike or components of a project, it still matters. They will hear that, even though they will say comment notice. They've heard it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, document 6.0 is the analysis of alternatives, so that's where you can read about the different. They throw a couple of weird ones in there, like, well, we'll turn it into a trucking and, warehouse. And we can all say no to that. You right. know? So we can say no. But you know, I think you can say, okay, this is, I want the reduced, deterrent, the reduced activity alternative, or because of all of the effects that this could cause, I am for the no project alternative. Right. There, okay. There's also, Molly? If, you know, the, I think one of the things they missed out on is that they could have a really reduced uh, alternative where they only bottle water and, right. they, and they don't go 24 hours a day. I think right. this thing where they start at 7 a.m. is, is uh, you know, that, that's kind of, uh, how should I put it, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, it's gonna you know, wake take, me up. taking a lot of advantage of the neighbors. <laughs> Yeah, um, Molly? Yeah. Uh, well, Molly? I have always had an objection to it, just in terms of the absurdity <coughs> of putting water in little plastic bottles and shipping it all over the country. Yeah. Yeah. Is, can, can we address that at all? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want. Can. They may, but you know, it'd be best to be as specific as you can, that you are objecting to <coughs> plastic bottles because of the cause that this causes for the greenhouse gas things and they don't really address the issue of the pollution in the wider area. They, they specifically say this is outside the scope. But it's not. Yes. It's well, OK, well, then I think that, that is where the more specific you can make it in your issues, the better. And, and be clear and that in that document, multiple places, they say they're a water bottling plant. Yeah. That is not the project. So you need to comment that this is not a water bottling plant, OK? As described. Wait, uh, Vicki, did you have? Yeah, I said thank you so much for doing this this evening. It's really been excellent. And two things. Um, if you look, which I have done now, in Weed, how this started in Weed was no EIR, a negative declaration. They started with two lines. They had six separate accountants, six permits <coughs> for the expansion of the plant. If we insist upon keeping just the very most minimum project, it's not going to be as cost effective for them. Because they have this example. It is the parent, <coughs> same parent company. In fact, in the lawyer's analysis of Crystal Geyser Roxanne, they say that Otsuka bought the majority shares in 19, excuse me, in 1991. So we have heard they are the minority, but they are the majority. Mm -hmm. So what we, I can also say is that the trucks, if you look online for uh, bottling plants, it's standard, 22 pallets per truck. I stood outside with United Kingdom team, documentary team. It was scary. On that street, which they just expanded, there was, there were in 50, 20 minutes, there were 15 trucks. There, somebody blew the whistle and said that one day he loaded 500 trucks. The average is 200 trucks per day for seven lines. This is a weed. This is so, weed. So you know that we're really on track here, telling them they're going to have to have mitigations up the wazoo. They are going to have, if they have a project, it's going to not be able to be expanded like they did in weed, which was horrible. I mean, they tripled the size of the plant with no further environmental review. But they know, because all of us have responded 200 letters Everybody knows that they're not going to get away with that here. So I'm just grateful. Thank you for all coming out. One more, a couple more, couple more questions, and let's let's have it be questions, please. Comments can be at the end. Um, let's get questions answered. Yeah, we just want to get you to one minute, please. Okay, one, because we we are. It is about ten after Who? eight here already. So. Diane. Yeah. Diane, well, I wanted to go back for a minute to the diagram that you showed, the photo of the plant because it might be interesting for people to see exactly what Crystal Geyser has done in the last two years to um, add to their plant when they clearly knew that they were probably going to have to do an EIR. Mm -hmm. And it, this is probably important down the road because they're gonna say, well, we've done all this. Mm -hmm. um, 
Can you find that, Bruce? Sure, we can tell you what they've added. It was four <coughs> walls. There was no plumbing, no nothing. It was an empty building. The last use was a storage facility for Vols Fire um, supplies, like people donating clothes and stuff. That, that's its last known use. They've added um, a nit nitrogen tank, propane tanks, HVC, um, two humongous, you know, 20 foot tall HVC. Um, there we go. Everything in, everything in orange has been added around the plant. Juice tanks, hold still. Concrete, <laughs> concrete pads, water, um, water storage <coughs> tanks, backup generators, chillers, cooling towers, juice unloading stations. They built a dock in there, CO2 and nitrogen. So this is where they're going to be putting in the, the caretaker's building. This is the pH neutralization building where they're saying they'll, that they'll treat the, the effluent to neutralize its uh, pH uh, before it's going there. This is where they're putting in the generators. This is their propane tank existing and they're probably putting a second one. These are where the CO2 and nitrogen tanks are. These are the chilling and cooling towers. This is the juice unloading station, so they will be having trucks on this side, you know, mm -hmm. some trucks coming in on this side too. The transformers, this is their domestic tanks, their juice tanks where they put the, the uh, fruit extract for their juice squeeze and stuff. And then this is their storage <laughs> tanks for the water that they'll be uh, pulling up from deck six. And then all of the truck docks, the main loading trucks is all over on this side. Mm -hmm. And the then juice part is here and then the loading docks are here. Yeah. And then this is the domestic well where they'll be using water for uh, the, like the toilets and the, the and some of the industrial process, some of the wind stuff will be coming from here, and then all of their uh, filling water for the juices and everything will be coming from deck six. Uh, just, I think it's the out the yes. Can you go back to the slide showing the twelve acres again that they plan on using it sure. for the irrigation? For the irrigation, irrigation. Option four, I guess. On the slide yep. While you're finding that, I just want to say um, uh, the people who've really worked, who are working on this, have put in hundreds and hundreds of hours. And I really want everybody in this room to write a letter and to, you know, if you think it's going to hurt, you should see what it's hurting these people who are so committed to um, to our well-being. <laughs> yeah, and their wives. And it's like it, we're not divorced yet, honey. <laughs> it's thousands of hours, and I just so honor the work you do. And I'd like to ask everybody here to really dig deep. And we've learned so much tonight, and and make a powerful statement because, as Peggy says, it it all really matters. So let's all do that, okay? So here's the, uh, this is the irrigation field. Yeah, the question I have is that this, wasn't this whole site a brown site at one time? Uh, there, yes, there were some cleanup spots from the, from the um, production mill up in the northern area in particular. There, Did it cover any of this area here? Uh, the lower area? Yes, yeah, behind the, the plant, there was clean up there as well. There, there was yes. still yes. sand up there too. Yes. Leaking underground. Um, how do we know that they, they did the correct uh, mediation? They hold, they, they have documentation that they hauled some out and they're missing documentation of cleanup that was said that was done. So we don't <laughs> actually know. They're, they know there's some storage tanks they never found. And we actually have some. Um, reports of the construction company that works for them that buried things like the plugs, like the, the, the when, when Coca-Cola closed their doors, they had all these pallets of uh, plastic uh, preformed and they got buried. Mm -hmm. on and the there, there but is also, isn't there also a lot of heavy metals and stuff from before? Mill days. From mill, from yeah. the mill days. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. It's in the documentation. Uh, it's found, oh God, under hazardous materials, and it's in there. Right. Appendix R. Okay, Francis. <laughs> okay, two items, okay. both are related. On this picture, remember that the deep soil has an infiltration rate of 35 inches per hour 
And if you sprinkle stuff on top of that, it'll be in the aquifer in two days. Yes. There's the first 15 seconds. Okay, on the biology <laughs> input, I have uh, analyzed the uh, biological stuff from the Forest Service, and there are actually nine sensitive or peony species that are present within one mile of this site. There's actually nine of them. There are also eight species of mollusks. Uh, there are some uh, TES mollusks in the City Park Springs. We have documentation of it. Whoever wants it, I've got a couple extra copies. Okay, coming up. Okay, um, yes. Oh, the fire tank. Um, they you use a fire tank. Yeah. Is that adequate to uh, what could happen if there was a fire? I don't have no idea. Quarter million gallons. Did you say? Well, have you heard that, Mark? Yeah. I was just wondering, know, do you know if the building and the, the existing facilities can it facilitate a, uh, addition of a, additional lines? Yes. <laughs> like how many? Here's the thing: the building as it stands right now can hold two lines according to their document. We have a photocopy of architectural plans that show a third bottling line around the, uh, along the south bottom side. They've still left enough space in all their pH neutraliza neutralization and all that to expand to a third line. They say they're not going to, but we, we're de definitely talking about that in, the, in our comments. We, we caught that. If, if, if in the comment you read the words, may, we may do this, we should, it, this should take care of it, the, if we anticipate, we expect that, those words, you call them on it. They can't use that because that means look over here while I do this over here. <laughs> and so, for example, in the, with, with traffic, it says that the truck operators will be directed to use that north exit and entrance. <coughs> it should say they will be required. Right. And they have to set up some kind of a system for enforcing it. Right. right. So that's an example of where they use this loose language. Yep. It makes it sound like they're going to do something, but when you look at it, you realize there's no teeth to that statement. <coughs> okay, any other questions before we wrap up? Well, so just a question. clarification. You said February 27th is the end date. Is that when they have to be at the place, or is that the mailing date? That. They have to be at the place by 5 p.m. electronically, or by mail. I don't know if a post stamp would do it, but if you want to get it in sooner, it won't hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah, yeah. and it can be emailed. They do give an email address. So, but uh, it, uh, it, to be safe, it would be best to mail it like on the Friday before. Because we had, I forget what else we commented on, and all of a sudden servers were down, and you couldn't mail your document in. I forget what that was. Yeah, but don't wait till the last minute because that's a technique that's used frequently. The servers go down on the last day. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, you know, send a hard copy in the mail saying when this is sent via email. So yep. You leave a leach field because. That headwaters supplies a lot of drinking water to the community that don't have clean drinking water. Yeah. And was that ever mentioned in their draft year at all? No. Did you mention that in your comments? Absolutely. Many yeah, that is something you, if you this see letter, no. things that were not addressed that you raised, make that point that I, on my comment of this date, said this, and this has not been addressed because they are supposed to address all issues in here and they sort of summarized it with all issues around water quality are done in this section. But if you feel that they have not taken your comments, very specifically point that out. Anybody else? Gosh, you guys, you, you get the A. Good job for staying. Thanks a lot. Mine's already 78 pages.